Hallelujah. There's just a sweet anointing in here. And um, all day long, I, the majority of the day, I was just locked up in my room before the Lord. And I just couldn't stop weeping. I had so much gratitude in my heart to God. So many good things that the Lord has done. And the breakthroughs after breakthroughs. My husband and I were saying the other day that we don't want to miss one service here at ABC. We used to go to church, you know, even as ministers, and we would say, oh, it's a 50-minute service. 30 minutes into it, we're looking at our clocks. Oh, gosh, you know, when's it going to be lunchtime? Oh, my goodness. Oh, you know, of course, we weren't the preachers then. But, <laughs> you know, we were like, at ABC, three hours go by, and we're like, we just got here. We don't even want to leave. And um, we feel the presence of the Lord and so many things that God has taught us here to have victory upon victory and overcome another challenge and just our lives have completely changed for the better. We go from glory to glory. And this morning I was just thinking about all those things and wishing we could have been here a long time ago. And people who miss a service, they're just not getting that saturation of the presence of God like they need and they're missing out and they're not receiving you know the recharging like when your cell phone you know goes down to yellow on the battery you're trying to make one last call <laughs> and then if it goes to red forget it even if you put it on the the charger sometimes you can't even make a call because the battery was so worn down that now it has to sit there for a matter of hours before you can even turn the power button on. Has that ever happened to anybody else but me? <laughs> and so sometimes when we feel stressed out, when we feel overwhelmed, or when we feel anxious, we have a lot on our plate, our battery's worn down. And we got to plug back into heaven. You know, Pastor... Uh, Joshua was teaching about the anointing. And when we do certain things in the spirit, we're either expending or giving the anointing away or releasing that anointing to others or we're recharging and building ourselves up on our most holy faith. And most people don't realize that when you're ministering to somebody or when you're... Um, doing affirmations, that's spiritual warfare, you are discharging the battery. The anointing is leaving you and going out from you. Okay? And so if we don't sit and worship God, if we don't pray in tongues to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, if we don't take communion, if we don't confess our sins frequently during the day, if we don't read the Word of God, which is our spiritual bread, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We have to have our sustenance and recharge ourselves so that we're always filled with His presence, with His anointing. That's how yokes are broken. That is how we overcome the devil. That is how we keep the devil under our feet because we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But we have to stay there all day long in the kingdom of God, watching our spiritual thermometer. So tonight, you know, uh, those of you that came into the 6 o'clock service got the treat of hearing um, Pastor Michael minister from his heart how God had showed him he had a hardened heart and he had to soften his heart to God. And like Matthew 5, 8 says that, that those who are pure in heart shall see God. And that sweet anointing 
came and touched all of our hearts and softened our hearts in the places where maybe there was brokenness from years of being wounded and all the devastations of the things the devil did and was purifying our hearts with that sweet anointing, recharging us. And um, the Lord kept saying to me, remind the people to give me an offering of thanksgiving, making a sacrifice of praise and thanking him. And they used to do offerings of, of thanksgiving in the temple, which uh, wasn't a blood sacrifice, but then when the temple was uh, destroyed and when they were scattered, they started to do it through prayer, through psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And as we were just worshiping God in the anointing and singing the words to him, he was receiving that tonight. He's, he's here tonight in a special way. And he's touching everybody's heart right now. You on the internet, you're feeling it too. That anointing is going forth. And it says here in Psalm 50, 14, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Psalm 69, 30, I will praise the name of God with a song. And will magnify him with thanksgiving. Psalm 95, 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Psalm 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So just wherever you are right now, just close your eyes. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Thank him. Praise him. Worship him. And as he is purifying our hearts by us doing this, we will see him move in a special way tonight. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, God. We are a grateful people. Thank you for saving us and redeeming us. And Lord, we don't look on the cares of our life tonight. We thank you for what you have brought us out of and that you will continue to do it again and again and again. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing us. Thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for engrafting us into your family. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for being our guide and our teacher and being patient with us and still being there and loving us regardless. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord God. Recharge us. Refresh us. Renew us in our strength. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Touch each one of us. Touch those in the Internet church. Touch those that are here. In a special way tonight. Heal the broken hearts. Purify our hearts. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, this is going to be a whole packet of tissue service. <laughs> Tears of joy and gratefulness. Amen. Well, those of you that are um, just hearing the first of the four-part series 
on fundamentals to activate faith. Uh, we're finishing up with part four tonight. I really encourage you to get a copy of the series. Um, it's so exciting when, you know, God gives us fresh revelation and I go back and look at my notes and, uh, you know, listen to uh, what was spoken. I'm like, that's really good because I'm just the vessel. It's the Holy Spirit using me. Amen. And I need that for myself too, the teaching, because we always have to go back to the firm foundations because if we have a very strong foundation and keep shoring that up, no earthquake can shake it or break it. Amen. Amen. Nothing that comes against us, no storms of life will be able to overcome us. And we are facing a lot of stuff right now, but it doesn't matter because we stand on the rock, our sound foundation. And so faith is part of that firm foundation. So we, we studied um, part one um, on March 6th, what faith is and what faith is not. This teaching will help you to understand what the difference between faith is and what faith is not. Instead of assuming that you are operating in faith, you will learn how to confidently activate true biblical faith. Have you ever thought you really were right on and something was of God and it just didn't happen? It was really disappointing. It was all like jacked up, you know, just didn't, didn't go anywhere. And you're like, I blew it, man. I thought that was really God. Well, don't raise your hands, but <laughs> that ever happened to anybody else but me, you can identify, okay? And so we don't want to do that anymore, do we? No. We want to be right on. We want to know what true faith is and walk in that. And so there's a lot of times you have gotten really great answers to prayer, though, haven't you? And we want to keep doing that. So we're going to grow from wherever you are now to that next level. Amen? So you're going to find out that uh, faith, uh, we base that definition on Hebrews 11.1, 1, that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and that faith believes that you've received, like Mark 11.24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Okay, What's the them? The them. Whatsoever things you desire, okay? Now, um, Merriam-Webster's definition of faith, belief and trust in and loyalty to God. Firm belief in something where there is no proof. Complete trust, something that is believed, especially with a strong conviction, without question. And what faith is not, it's not foolish. Uh, faith is not in the future tense. I will be healed means you'll never be healed because you'll never catch up with the future. Mm -hmm. Jesus did it on the cross, so I have already been healed is what we declare. And what you have, the devil can't take from you. Yeah. Amen? And so um, it's faith is not hope. Faith is something you've received. Um, faith is that which brings your hopes into reality. And faith is not doubt or unbelief. Faith is not assumption or presumption. Faith is not mental assent. And Matthew 17, 20, Jesus uh, said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, which fits on the end of your, your finger, that's how small that mustard seed is, you say to any mountain of problems in your life, challenging you you say remove hence to yonder place go from here to over there get out of here and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible to you amen and um, then we were talking about why the eyes of faith are necessary and you walk by faith and not by sight according to 2 Corinthians 5 7 you need to trust God, not trust what your eyes see, because faith changes reality and brings into existence from the unseen what God has already given to you. How do you make the bridge from the unseen to the seen is with your faith bridge. And that's what's really important to, to develop 
those eyes of the spirit and see into the spirit realm and expect to see what you know that you already have. Okay? So you have to use a faith vision and you have to learn to see your eternal future. And biblical visual, visualization sees your victory with the eyes of faith. So that's important to develop stronger faith so that you can become a super conqueror. Because if you are not conquering challenges that you face now, there's no way you can become a super conqueror because there are bigger demons at the next level. Okay? So if you're going into a boxing ring and you're going to be fighting somebody that's double your height, double your size, double your speed, and is a champion, world champion, undefeated foe, you better be better than him or her when you get in that ring. Because Jesus has already knocked down the enemy. He, just some of those demons just don't remember. So we're going to keep hitting them with affirmations, punching them with affirmations. Every time I say an affirmation, boom, 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 in your face, devil. Okay? So we grow in our faith, and I'm not afraid of the devil. You should not be afraid of the devil, for greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. But we need to learn to develop to that point. If you don't have a challenge, you will never develop your faith. Get off the pity party. Why me, Lord? What did I ever do to deserve even one of the troubles I've known? You know, that's a boozer song. <laughs> and I'm not going to be sitting down drinking away my sorrows and problems with booze, okay? I don't want pity party as my partner, right? And so I'm going to develop stronger faith to become a super conqueror. That's part three. In Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 37 says, You are more than a conqueror through him, Jesus, that loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. And that means the word more than a conqueror is hyper, super, nikeo. In the Greek means you are a super overcomer, a super conqueror. You prevail and you get the victory because God already gave it to you through Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we just need to put on our super cape. We just have to remember who we are in Christ Jesus and soar in our faith, okay? Why do you want to become a super conqueror in Christ Jesus? Well, there are 10 reasons. Number one, Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And uh, that's n number one reason. Number 10 re reason is Romans 8, 30. I'm just giving you a summary. Moreover, whom he, God, did predestinate them, he also called. You are called, every one of you. God has called you for a special purpose on this earth that no one else can fulfill. He has given you the skill and resources in that seed of faith inside of you because you're a mountain mover. You just need to develop it. Amen? And you've already moved some mountains. Now God wants you to move bigger ones, okay? So he called you and whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified them, he glorified. You are the glorious church in Christ Jesus. And now he wants the world to see that, okay? And how do you develop stronger faith to become a super conqueror in Christ Jesus? Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you um, saved through faith that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And Romans 12, 3. God has already dealt to every person, every man, the measure of faith that you need. It's like once you put yeast inside of bread, it's just going to grow. You have that growing faith inside of you. It's already been put in each person. It's our job to water it. It's our job to hear the word of God over and over and over. And that's how faith comes. Hearing and hearing and hearing. And uh, 
There are 27 reasons why you need to become a super conqueror because if you are not at that level, when times of trouble come and you are already are an expert in the ring, it's too late to get started then. Right? Just like the EMTs, the emergency medical uh, technicians were told in an emergency meeting, if a disaster happens in Los Angeles, there are only 10 places that you and your ambulances and paramedics can go and treat and help people triage them and get them to safety. The mayor's house was not on the top 10. Means if he was hurt, he would die. Means if hospitals are down, they have no electricity, they're not helping them. They're not bringing emergency generators. They're not doing anything. And if there is no help out in the world, we as super conquerors know from where our help comes from. We plug into heaven and you become the helpers because the glory of God is in each one of us and you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But if you can't get yourself healed, how are you going to get somebody else healed? Right? And you can't help the poor if you are the poor. Right? All right, so let's conquer some of this stuff. You're ready to go through part four now, right? Okay. Everybody that um, ha um, doesn't have an outline, raise your hand. If you're on the internet for some reason didn't get that email, let us know and we'll send it to you. Okay. Will the Son of Man find faith on the earth in the end times? That's what we're going to see, okay? And we prefer to use the King James or New King James Version because it consistently has the deepest levels of revelation on most scriptures. So um, uh, most of this is going to be in the New King James. Let's go through the overview. Luke 18, 8 reads in the New King James Version, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Does this question infer that there is a doubt that faith can be found when Jesus returns? Will Jesus find only religion instead of true faith? Will Jesus find only scattered, fearful sheep in the end times? Or does this question imply that Jesus cannot return until he finds the God kind of faith that causes him to return for the justified believers who stand in faith unafraid, who will be the remnant who are still alive and remain. Okay? Who here wants to be the captured and imprisoned and persecuted? No hands went up. You passed. Y'all got A's. <laughs> I don't want to be that either. Okay, we want to overcome every situation, right? Okay, letter A. What application of or level of faith will Jesus find when he returns? Grace is multiplied um, or comes through knowledge of God and Jesus Christ in 2 Peter 1, 2. And faith comes by hearing, like through learning, believing, and acting on the knowledge of God's promises in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. But there is one kind of faith. There are some teachings that say there are a lot of kinds of faith. There aren't. Just, they're just one faith. But I'll show you the different applications of them, okay? For God has given us all the measure of faith, but there are different applications and levels. Okay, so what is saving faith? So if we're going to go to saving faith, then uh, let's go to Ephesians 2. And if we look up Ephesians, giants eat peas and corn. Okay, here we go. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, genuine faith, number two, that would be 2 Timothy. So follow along with me in your Bibles. 1, verse 5. 
when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Unfeigned and in the New King James is translated genuine faith. Okay, so God wants to find that in each of us. And um, historical faith, John 5, 39 And John 5.39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So we, when we go through the Old and New Testament, we see all the people that were standing in faith, and they become our model, our examples. And it inspires us that we can do the same. Amen? Number four, there's healing faith. Luke 18 and we're going to go to verse 42. Luke 18, 42 says, And Jesus said unto them, Receive thy sight, thy what? Faith has saved thee. Okay? And uh, that's why we have healing school online. That's why we have School of Dominion. We're teaching people how to develop your faith from glory to glory. Number five. There's also faith without root. That's Luke 8, 13. And verse 13 says, They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation they do what? Okay, so in the end times... People that are not rooted in their faith will not make it. Remember what I talked to you about last week about that big old weed that looked like a tree stump because a month or so later, because they didn't take it out, they had a hacksaw and the seven roots that were stuck down there could grow back. So they had to get it out by digging two feet down and a five foot trench to get it all out. When it was this little tiny thing, in two seconds, they could have pulled it out. It had no roots. But if God needs us to get rooted as mustard seed trees, which grow two stories high, that mustard seed can tell the mountain to go, but it can't when it's a little baby seed not knowing what to do but it's the potential there that's why you have the potential you have to learn through the word of god the devil can just pluck it out easily when we hear the word of god the devil wants to come and steal the word before it gets firmly planted in our hearts see so that's why you have to do your affirmations because you are firmly making sure that you are grounded and rooted on the word of God. Amen? Amen? Okay, unwavering faith. And that is Hebrews 10. And verse 23. Let us hold fast. Okay, like the roots has to really be stuck in the ground. The profession or affirmation of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let's go to James 1, verses 5 through 7. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. It means like generously and without limitation. And it shall be given him or her. But let him ask in what? Faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed, and let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. I want you to go to verse 8 as well. A double-minded man or person is unstable in all his or her ways. So when there's wavering faith, you do not get prayers answered. Confusion is wavering. Okay? Number seven, dead faith without works, James 2. Okay. 
Okay. And let's go to verse 17. Even so, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So, faith by itself is not going to happen. Okay? So, what happens when you have no faith? Number eight. And we're going to go to James. Um, to, oh, I'm sorry. Dead, that's dead faith. Okay? Uh, and then when you have no faith, it's Romans 14.23. Is this helping you? And he that doubteth is damned. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Doubt and unbelief isn't very good. And if he eat, he, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. Well, now, does that motivate you to want to grow more in faith? <laughs> okay. What's common faith? Each of us have common faith, okay? So common faith, Titus 1, 4. And Titus 1, 4 says, To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. So it means that, you know, when he was preaching, he saw that Titus had Faith for God. That's good. We all have faith for God. Okay? That's like the like the measure we've been given. And then we also have mutual faith. Romans 1.12. So let's go to Romans. And verse 1. I mean chapter 1 verse 12. And it says. That is that I may be comforted together with you. By the mutual faith. Both of you and me. So if we are in agreement in our faith. That's a good thing. Okay? Now, little faith is good. It's not as good as we want to get, but it's a good place to start, right? Matthew 6, because we all have to start there. Matthew 6, 30. Can't stop at the, start at the top. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? See, they were doubting that God could take care of them. So people who say, God, are you there? Can you really help me? That's little faith. Okay? So let's grow. Weak faith. All right. Weak faith is Matthew. Uh, uh, oh, let's, oh, let's go to also Matthew 8. I'm sorry. 826 with another little faith example here. Matthew 826 says and he saith unto them why are you fearful O ye of little faith so what is the demon that keeps attacking those that have little faith fear right then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea and then there was a great calm so when you stay calm you are moving into greater faith why because you trust and you're not going to be shaken. See that? Okay, now let's go to weak faith, Romans 4. And we're going to go to verse 19. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault for who hath resisted his will? Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong book. Uh, that was right book, wrong chapter. Romans 4, 19. That was a freebie. Okay, here, here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Who are we talking about? Abraham. When he was about 100 years old, if you didn't know, you know now, because that hundred's really a giveaway, right? Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded, not half persuaded, 
not wishy-washy, fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. And verse 22, therefore it was imputed or credited to him for righteousness. Okay, so that is very, very important. If you want to have strong faith, <clears throat> anytime the devil comes to you and says, uh-uh, I don't think the word of God's going to work for you. You recognize the wiles of the devil. Recognize his voice. Recognize the attacks immediately and say, uh-uh, I am fully persuaded. I am not moving. I am continuing to do my affirmations, and I'm going to stick my spiritual warfare in your face, devil. See this? Remember I used to have the little seed put on here? like a marker on my finger the size of a mustard seed. I stick it in the devil's face. Remember, I have a seed. That seed of faith moves mountains, so get out of my face, devil. Lack, move. Checkbook, be filled. Account, be filled. Money cometh in abundance daily in Jesus' name. Okay? Strong faith. Now, great faith, let's go to Romans 15. And uh, verse 1. When then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. A we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. So we then that are strong. It doesn't mean that you're supposed to be sick. Okay, but it does mean that we are supposed to help those that are infirmed. But like, you, you can't help the sick if you are the sick, right? Like, look at those that with the Ebola thing. Someone that has a challenge of Ebola can't go help someone else with Ebola because they're with a fever in bed. And if they go to their healthy families, they're going to be uh, contagious and could possibly spread it but when you're strong not even Ebola can get you it'll die when it comes within five feet of you because the anointing of God on you breaking every yoke of bondage you see what I'm saying okay all right so that was uh, now let's go to Romans 4 20 to 21 He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. We're going back to Abraham. Remember, he did not waver because he stood glorifying God. What does that mean? He focused on the Lord when problems were being thrown at him. So if his focus is going to be on the resolver, who cares how little this problem is compared to the big God he's keeping his eyes on. So when we get in fear, when we get in unbelief, we've taken our eyes off of our big God and we've, the devil's put a magnifying glass on our eyeballs trying to make the problem look bigger and it scares the person. Do you see what I'm saying? It's all fake or Rooney. Don't believe it. Don't take the bait. Remember what the truth is. That's your conviction. That's what you're rooted on. The word of God is your truth. Remember, no matter what we said, don't rely on what your eyes see. Rely on the word of God so your eyes of faith are seeing your solution even though it's not in front of you yet. In the physical, it's here. It's yours. It's got your name on it. It just needs to have that shipment come on that faith bridge to appear in the scene realm. But it's your answer and solution already because you believed it the minute you prayed it. Get it? Okay, that's great faith. And you have great faith. But we're great faith in training. Okay, assured faith, what is that? Okay, let's go to Hebrews 10 and 
verses 19 through 38. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, you can enter to speak to God the Father because you're covered by the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of faith. There's your full assurance. Because it's in your heart. That's why he was purifying our hearts today before service. So this faith word could be dropped deeper in our hearts and take deeper root tonight. Because he wants you to move some big old mountains tomorrow. Okay? Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. That means we had to renew our minds. And our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast again. Here it is. With the profession or affirmation of our faith without wavering. I'm reminding you again. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider um, one another to provoke. That also means to um, get excited, to inspire one another unto love and to good works, not forsaking, verse 25, the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. ABC Church stands for Assembling of the Body of Christ based on Hebrews 10, 25. We do not disobey the word of God. We come to church every time the door is open and that's why we grow in faith. That's why the devil is under our feet. That's why any challenge that comes to us, that we know mm -mm, you're not going to have anything to do with us. We are becoming what God has already called us to be, and we are, by faith, super congers. Now we're developing in skill. Why? Because he is called the assembling of the body of Christ to get ready for the day that's approaching. Here it is. It was prophesied through the naming of this church that we would usher in our Messiah. And the second coming of Jesus. Right here. This is our goal. This is our vision. We are preparing people for the end times in this church. And uh, the Lord wants me to read the whole thing to 38. For if we sin, verse 26, willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose you shall you be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sac sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? Verse 30, For we know him... That has saith, vengeance belongeth to me. God is saying this. I will recompense and the saith the Lord. I will vindicate you. And again the Lord shall judge his people. Verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Woe unto them that come against you, the children of God. The demons fear you. Because of whose you are. Verse 32. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated with revelation, in other words, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Haven't we? And there's more coming. 33. Partly, whilst you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used. Verse 34. For you had compassion of me in my bonds, 
and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. God says to you tonight, do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. But he says right here, be confident that he has a great reward for you. And a recompense is something that is given to somebody that is a repayment of services or works you've done for him. Amen? Verse 36, for you have need of patience. Okay, so we got to be waiting more and really work that patience because patience is going to be a very important fruit to endure in the end times, okay? That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Verse 37, let's keep going. For yet a little while that he, Jesus, that shall come, he will come, and he will not tarry. Verse 38, now you hear that are believers hearing my voice. You are the just and you shall live by faith. But if any man draw back or retreats or backslides, God is saying this to those people, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Doesn't he say he vomits out of his mouth, those that are lukewarm? But you who are training here at ABC, you are first 39. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition or damnation, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, I could go home now, but no, we got more to go. Okay, number 17, faith is part of the fruit of the Spirit. I'm just getting so excited. Let's go to Galatians 5. 22 to 23, you'll see that faith is part of the fruit of the Spirit. Also, if you go to 1 Corinthians 12, 9, you'll see the miraculous faith. Faith that can bring people from the dead, that is a gift of the Spirit. But if you do not learn how to walk in the fruit of the Spirit first, you cannot become a super conqueror. God can use you in the gifts. Okay, for instance... Uh, one time I was, you know, uh, 10 years I was in the mission field in Central America and Guatemala. We went up to the north side, the Caribbean, by Belize and uh, by Puerto Barrios. And uh, uh, we decided before we, we went to minister to the church, there was like this big river and these slides going down in the river and you know, we hardly did anything fun. We just ministered, 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 and everybody, please, please, can we go? Okay, okay, let's go. And then I said, are you sure it's safe and everything? Yeah, okay. So I'm going down this water slide into this natural river, you know? And before I get there, I see that there's like moss and algae and like dead fish. And, and I'm going down this slide and I, I can't stop. And I'm like, oh, no. And I hit the water and it was like tadpoles and stuff, you know, and okay, I said, no, I'm not going back in there. So I, I, I go take a shower, get ready and, and thank, and then, you know, um, and I, I started getting these really terrible pains and, you know, I had to run to the bathroom and instead of yellow urine, it came out red blood and it was very painful. And then all of a sudden the squirts happened. You know, Montezuma's revenge. Well, the, Montezuma is a Mexican, you know, Aztec god. Well, you know, Tecunamon is the Mayan god. It was Tecunamon's revenge trying to attack me. And uh, so everything I ate came out like water, you know, from one end to the other. And then there was a fever. And uh, then there was like the throwing everything up in those days I was really really thin so when you can't hold down food and you're thin not really good you know and uh, I was so pale thank God we were going to the mir a miracle service you know and I was standing in faith that I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus the problem was I was the guest speaker 
with fever dripping down my face. You know, I was really like, you know, you know how you kind of feel like so spent after, you know, you've, you know, had your head over the toilet, you know, just vomiting and vomiting and then you have to sit on the toilet with a bucket from one end to the other. I'm sorry to be so graphic, but that... <laughs> then I go in the, in the church and I'm like, uh, in the name of Jesus, I will not have any problems or need to rush to the bathroom in the middle of my sermon. Okay? Just like last week, the devil tried to attack me with behavior challenges and coughing and sneezing and all like that. And the devil says, oh, you can't go to church to preach. And I said, oh, really? Watch this, devil. Do you see my finger? This little mustard seed can move mountains. I say to this mountain of infirmity, go in the name of Jesus. But I had to confess my sins. What, what sins do you look for? Always look for unforgiveness. Always look for being offended. And always look if there's fear. Well, I was mad at the person who told me that was a clean river. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you can't put the brakes on and climb back up that slide, and it was really gross, you know, you get up and you got green scum all over you. That wasn't a very pleasant vacation. You know, I should have gone to, uh, what's that water slide thing over here? Raging Waters. That would have been cleaner, well, you think, hopefully. At least the water's not green. And they chlorinate it. And so I had to forgive that person. I mean, I didn't even realize it. You know, till you analyze and you rewind the video. So you have to confess your sins. And then I, had to, then I could receive my healing because that was blocking me from receiving my healing. The anointing fell. But while I was preaching, the anointing fell on the word of God. See, that Mark 16, you preach the word. And signs and wonders will follow after the word of God. It's not me. It's the word of God. I waved my hand. People were healed of cancer. Crippled people threw down their canes. They're walking. They're running. I'm still up there going, oh, my God, am I going to vomit? Because I was just the vessel. You know what I mean? It's the gifts of the spirit were in operation helping all those people. But I didn't know how to walk in the fruit of joy, peace, patience to the degree that I do now that I learned at ABC. To walk in the anointing so that I have my shield around me at all time, my kingdom of God shield. Remember like Star Trek? And if the fiery darts come, boing. Contagious diseases, boing, bounces off. Hay fever, boing, bounces off, right? Whatever it is. Cancer makes no difference. God healed me of cancer twice supernaturally. We need to know the word works regardless of what's coming at us. I still got up there and preached. With a 103 degree fever, you should not be standing at the pulpit. Three times they said you need to go to the hospital. They brought the doctor to me to try to convince me to go in an ambulance to the hospital. I said, it's a miracle service. What kind of model am I going to be if I go to the hospital and cancel the service? Do you see how the devil was trying to come against me? No, but because I was in that anointing and because I realized what was going on, at the end of the service, everything was fine. The anointing broke the yoke of bondage. We need to learn to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't mean that challenges won't come. But my faith could not have grown if I didn't have to fight that. And then I grew stronger, see? So every challenge that I had for my faith to grow, I had to step up to the plate knowing that the word of God was true and not wavering, see? And so was it easy? No. Was it, you know, but lesson learned, right? And so now uh, it, it's easier if I just... Anytime there's a little tinge of a, a challenge of a symptom of something, then I'm going to, like, rewind the video. What happened? See? And then you do your CRR, you know, for those of you who are semester one, confess, repent, you know, renounce, or your RRB, renounce, break, you know, um, uh, re repent, renounce, break, your RRB, either one of those, depending on what level you're at. 
And if you don't know any of those, then we invite you to come to semester one online or go to School of Dominion, but you missed the, the cutoff or we just started this year and go next year. But online, you could still get in with our Bible college as well. So come to church every Friday, every Sunday, and you will get what you need by hearing and hearing the Word of God, growing your faith, so you're going to be ready no matter what challenge comes to you. Amen? Amen? Now, let's go to B. Work your faith because faith without works is dead, James 2, 14 and 17 through 20. Number one, you see then that a man is justified by works, but not by faith only. Number two, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works. And that Greek word ergon means acts. Faith without acts is dead also, okay? Let's turn the page and go to C. Balance your faith. Walk in the fruit of the Spirit, especially in joy, peace, and patience. You can look that up in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, number 2. Walk in forgiveness to release a roadblock to your prayers. Do you see? I just showed you that. So if you want some of your prayers to be answered, go back and check out, is there any unforgiveness anywhere? And you'll find that reference in Matthew 6, 14. Number 3, walk without being offended to avoid another roadblock to your prayers. And you'll find that in Proverbs 18, 19 and Luke 7, 23. Number four, now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. So you can't just operate in faith by itself or we're not going to be balanced Christians. Okay? Number five, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father, 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, number 6. But let us who are of the day be sober, means being vigilant, means sharp-minded, means that you can notice what the attack of the enemy is, you could recognize it, and then you can avoid it, and then be led by the Spirit, okay? Putting on the breastplate of faith. Wait a minute, I thought the breastplate was righteousness. Well, that's in Ephesians 6, but now we're in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. And it says, put on the breastplate of faith and love because that is righteousness when you walk in faith and love. Okay? So you need faith to walk in righteousness. You need love to walk in righteousness. And as a helmet, the hope of salvation. In Ephesians 6, it just says the helmet of salvation. So it means that we know that we're saved, but we could give the hope to the lost that they also can be saved. Amen? And number seven, the fruit of uh, the spirit of faith is also important uh, because that fruit of faith is what is needed to do miracles. Okay? So if if you want to operate in the power gifts, you have to really be able to know how to grow that faith and be open and available for the Holy Spirit, but that, um, <clears throat> to be able to grow that in you, okay? D, stand fast in your faith, faith, Galatians 5, 1 through 6. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of what? Bondage. So we're, that person's in a yoke of bondage because they don't have the anointing which is breaking that yoke if they walk out of the kingdom of God and if they don't confess their sins frequently. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, So those of us that walk after the Spirit, this is who we are, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. So you cannot walk in great faith unless we learn to develop the fruit of love that goes with it. And love God, and and, and that's unconditional, and we're not going to judge people or be critical of them, we're going to love them and love ourselves. A lot of times the unforgiveness is self-unforgiveness blocking your prayers. 
or sometimes we were mad at God because we didn't think he came through, but we didn't realize that maybe God was trying to um, head us in one direction, but we weren't listening or we weren't obeying what the word said. And so he can't stop the enemy from attacking us if we are not abiding by the word of God. See, here's an umbrella. It's raining curses and problems and pain and sickness and poverty all over. But if I go under that umbrella of the kingdom of God because my sins have been forgiven and, and then I am b being a hearer and doer of that word, I'm protected. See? But once I sin, then that, that covering is gone and I'm out here vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. I got to get back under the anointing and that's why it breaks the yoke of bondage. So it's me. I have to move. God already did his part. We have to partner with him. He, Jesus already paid the price at the cross. So what do I have to do? He never changes. I'm the one that has to change. You're the one that has to change. We have to do what the word says. Okay? And that's how we get protected. Now, um, Hebrews 10, 23 to 25 says... Let us, okay, what we read that, remember? Let us hold fast to our affirmation or uh, our profession of faith. And so you hold fast to your faith by continuing in the word of God. Very important. Okay, let's go to E. Activate your faith with a faith action plan. Because faith without works is dead. Faith without actions is dead. So we're going to activate that. Some of you are already doing this concerning healing. Tonight you're going to do it with your faith. Because, okay, Jesus, because the just shall live by faith. Number one, behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith, according to Habakkuk 2.4. Number two, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith, Romans 1.17. Number three, but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back my Soul has no pleasure in him. Remember we read that in Hebrews 10.38. We have to use this in our faith action plan. Number four. For as the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works or acts is dead also. Okay. And I'm going to read to you out of um, Hebrews 10 verses 35 to 39. Cast not away therefore your confidence. Remember we read that. I'm reminding you. You have been given great confidence by God. He wants to reward you for your love of him. Your trust of him. Not really what you do for him. It's because of who you love. That's what he's going to reward. You love him. We don't do it so we can get stuff from him. Okay? And uh, remember in verse 36 that you have to be patient. And then verse 37 says, in a little while, right, he is going to be coming. So we're preparing for him to come. We want to have that great kind of faith when he comes back. Amen? Amen. And verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. So we're not retreating. We're advancing, right? And verse 39, we at ABC are not of them that draw back unto damnation or perdition or final spiritual ruin. You and I are of them that believe to the saving of our souls. Hallelujah. So here's our faith action plan. You should have one of those sheets. You put your name on there. Uh, I do have some examples for the healing one. But then we're going to do tonight something concerning our faith. Okay. So what am I standing in faith for? Number one, A. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works, we just read that, or acts is dead, uh, James 2.26, and the just shall live by faith, Hebrews 10.38. For example, healing for pain in my back. Now, I didn't say healing for my pain, because it ain't mine, I'm giving it back. But it is my back. So I'm going to tell the devil, get off of my back, okay? And so, number two, what scripture... Or scriptures will I use for my affirmation or affirmations? So you can do more than one affirmation, but I'm just doing a general um, example. 
A, this is a faithful saying that these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men and women, according to Titus 3, 8. For, oh, here's a scripture, 1 Peter 2, 24, your affirmation. My back has been, remember past tense, has been healed of pain and the cause of pain. Because I just don't want the pain to go and, and still there's a, you know, a challenge there, right? By the stripes of Jesus, and I'm going to do it a hundred times a day. And if the pain goes from a level 10 to an 8 in two days of doing a hundred times, I'm going to up that. I'm going to do 200. And then if it goes down to a 5 or 4, I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to do 300. And when it gets to a 0, I'm good, right? And then I'm going to do maintenance of about 100 a day. Okay? So let's flip the page. And so keep this as your blank copy and photocopy it and then write, you could write down different things that you're challenged with in your life and have them in a file, okay? So don't write on this one or you won't have a new one to keep using. Okay, number three, what is my new walk of faith to put this plan into action? Example for severe back challenge, someone that has been bedridden. Goal one, I will pray 1 Peter 2, 24, 100 times a day. Let's start there. And then see where do we go. Goal two, I will pray the morning prayer and confess sins frequently during the day with CRR or RRB according to 1 John 1, 9. If you don't know what that is, come talk to us after service or email us and we'll get you those copies of those, that prayer. Okay. Semester two and three graduates can include the Kingdom of God, the KOG, and the 3W, three witness prayers. Okay. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it till you get to those semesters. Goal three. I will not lie down all day because that's what the person was doing all day, right? Because they had a challenge sitting up, period. But I'll sit up in bed to pray. That's a good goal. Listen, when I was bedridden, when I was challenged with cancer, I could not turn. You know how you get sore on one side and you just want to flip over? I couldn't do that. I had to wake up my husband at 2 o'clock and said, I really need to turn, honey. Could you just turn me? And he was like, should I get an omelet lifter and boop? You know. <laughs> yeah. but, and um, the bathroom was right next to our bedroom, and it took me 15 minutes to walk there because it was very challenging. So I know what it's like to just sit up, try to sit up and stay sitting up, okay? Um, and, but, but I did it. You know, and I kept listening to the scriptures. In those days, it was cassettes, and it was hard to find those cassettes that kept going around and round and round. Instead of stopping, you have to get out of bed and you know turn it over. But um, I would I would repeat it. Kenneth Hagin would be pre just the scriptures, and I would repeat the scriptures. I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I would just keep repeating all those scriptures, and um, then okay, say. Goal uh, two, I will pray the morning prayer and confess sins frequently during the day with the CRR or RRB, according to 1 John 1, 9. Semester two and three graduates can include KOG and 3W. Goal three, I will not lie down all day but sit up in bed. Now, um, sometimes that's not easy to do, but push yourself. One lady we administered to, she had a... Um, filing cabinet right next to her bed and she would hold on to the handles so that she could sit up. She lived by herself. And come to find out when we ministered to her, she was raped by her father when she was little and she never forgave him. And we ministered to her about why it was important. She was ready to do so. We led her in a prayer she repeated to forgive her father and she ran up the stairs out of the church. This stuff works, okay? All right, and so goal four, after I can sit up in bed successfully, I will sit in the chair to pray. Let's get out of bed because Pastor Joshua says the demons want to get people to get out of the community, get sick and stay home, get so sick they stay in bed, and get so sick then they stay in a box forever in a coffin. Get out of that bed, 
okay? And um, goal five, I will do back stretches. Goal six, I will go for a five-minute walk and increment my time daily. Say you could just stand up around your bed, holding on to your dresser, whatever it is. Stand up. Okay? Say it's 30 seconds, you have to sit down. Well, tomorrow I'm going to do 60 seconds. Next day I'm going to do 90 seconds. Do you see what I'm saying? Increment daily. All right, example for a mild back challenge. Okay, one time my husband was working and he pulled his back. My husband never gets sick. And uh, he, he needed me to drive him. He couldn't even drive. Because it, he, he, something snapped, and he was like this and couldn't straighten up, and he was in a lot of pain. And um, he says, I'm going to work. I said, really? How are you going to drive yourself when I'm driving myself to my work? He says, because I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. It doesn't matter what it looks like, remember? <laughs> it doesn't matter what your eyes are looking at. <laughs> You look at what the Word of God says, right? <laughs> so, what did he do as his faith action plan? I'll pray 1 Peter 2, 24, 100 times a day. Goal 2, I'll pray the morning prayer and confess sins frequently during the day. The CRR or RRB, same thing. Uh, or the, the Kingdom of God or three witness prayers as well. Goal 3, I will not skip any normal responsibilities. He says, I'm going to work. I don't care. I'm going. Goal four, um, so he didn't, he didn't skip his responsibilities. You know, he got up, he, you know, uh, do you want me to take the garbage cans out? No, I'll do it. Might be a little slower, uh, 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 pushing those cans, <laughs> shuffling like, you know, some uh, little 90-year-old fragile guy, but he did it. And are you sure you don't want me to help me help with the garbage can? No. Do you see what I'm saying? He was telling the devil, I'm not receiving this. Because if I'm normal, I'm going to do normal stuff. And so that pain is a lie. He kept saying, it's, it's a lie. This is a lie. This is a lie. I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Truth is, I've been healed. See what I'm saying? My back has been healed by the stripes of Jesus. Okay. So he went to work, did some back stretches, goal five and six. Um, you know, he had to, to go walking around the house, loosening up, doing whatever he, he needed to do, and doing his affirmations as he was doing it. And uh, it was about, was it 24 hours? You know, pretty soon he was like, hi, honey. I'm like, praise God. If you're better, you want to cook tonight then? No. <laughs> well, I cooked for him that night. Okay. So... Then you have this affirmation log that Pastor Matthew um, uses in, uh, as the dean of our Bible schools. And it works really well. You just put like 1 Peter 2.24 and then write what it says. My back has been healed by the stripes of Jesus or I have been healed by the stripes of Jesus is your general. Your specific this is the next one. 1 Peter 2.24, my back has been healed by the stripes of Jesus. And uh, what's the, the date that you started and how many? Okay, well, today is the 27th and I'm doing 100 tonight. And tomorrow's the 28th and I'll do 100. Then I'll reassess. Is, is it, am I seeing from a 10 being the worst pain coming down? Am I seeing improvement? If not, then I better increase that. Do, do you see you can gauge that? All right. Like the other day when the devil tried to give me severe hay fever and a fever and I, was, uh, I had a, you know... I broke that fever, and um, I used a whole box of tissue all night long, coughing and sneezing and blowing my nose, and, and uh, then I did 50 affirmations. Uh, my husband did them with me, and then I could breathe from one side of my nostril. I went, oh, that's pretty good. I only had to do 50 for one side. Let's do 50 more for the other side. See what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so this will really help you here. Now what I want you to do is something very unusual today. I want you to add on your faith action plan your faith level of where you think you're at. Remember the just shall live by faith? And say if you feel that your, your faith is still have a lot of fear right? 
So you may be great faith in one area where you got a lot of healing, right? But then there's other areas where you're still afraid because we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. Remember how you got the challenge overcome in that one area and apply it to the weak area. Do you see? You could do this. You've already seen answers in your life. You've already ministered your testimonies and praise reports to other people. So write down all the areas you're still challenged and you put it into a faith action plan of what you're going to do to overcome that fear. Walk through that faith. Go back through the CDs of part one, two, three, four. Identify where you're at. I list the different things on here of what kind of faith and the levels and where you can identify yourself and then you say, okay, you know, I want to get to be having great faith, right? But it's okay if in some areas it's little and weak. Because we all start there, right? If my faith was great to not get a bladder infection and diarrhea and, you know, Takunuman's revenge, I wouldn't have gotten it. But I had to grow through that. But... God had taught me to have cancer-defeating faith, but not the germ faith. Do you see what I'm saying? So I have to learn that one and grow through that. See, we're all, we, okay? And, and some of you might have great, great faith. Maybe, you know, you had a challenge of a bladder infection, and in 20 minutes you were, like, completely healed. See? You have great faith inside that little seed, that little mustard seed. Now let's apply it to every area of your life. Amen? Amen. And I'm excited to hear the testimonies that are going to be coming in of the new mountains that you are going to be moving in the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen.